facto expansion. The DLC that changed Splatoon 2's community forever. It's the story mode many wish we originally had in the game. There's so much world building that could be done in regards to the deep sea metro. Today, I'm here to tell lies. Theories that could be true, but definitely aren't true. <laughs> Here's some fake world building attempts that we could pretend exist that are maybe related to Octo Expansion. Yeah! We've seen that the Salmonids of Splatoon 3 are able to consume and nullify the fuzzy ooze present in Splatoon 3 storyline. Could the same be said about the ooze used by Tartar in Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion campaign? After all, if the ink in Splatoon 3 causes Inklings and Octolings to sprout hair magically, but does nothing at all to our little buddy, maybe he could take a drink of that blue Gatorade DNA altering slurry and come out just fine. Just don't let that little guy back in the water. We don't want any Kabambo Corp infected boss salmon on the loose. And maybe that would be an even better weapon for Tartar though. Just imagine an endless army of fly fish at his side. <laughs> Good luck throwing bombs in all those flyfish baskets. We're never told how real the Kamabo Corporation is. What if it originally had a different name? Or a different purpose? After so many years of Tartar being isolated from society and growing a hatred for all life, maybe he just sort of assumed that all of his information was still correct. When you keep thinking about the same things over and over, you're bound to make a mistake every once in a while in your memories. Kinda like playing a game of telephone with himself. Ha, huh. get it? Telephone? Tele All the levels of Octo Expansion are built into a giant subway map. As someone from the New York area, I wonder, is the subway complicated enough? What if there used to be an extra rail, but after so many test subjects being used and discarded in the deep sea retro, Sea Cucumber just decided enough was enough to try and speed run the process of finding more subjects who could pass all the trials successfully. CQ was just asked to just shut down some of the lines. Hopefully no important NPCs were living there. Stuck to forever live their lives as concept art. We all assume the subjects are being used to create the perfect being, mixed into that ooze that we see used in the expansion campaign. But what do you think happens to the subjects who fail so quickly that they are deemed useless? Do they also become part of the ooze as well? You'd think it'd be no, but could it be yes? After all, sea cucumber is just one person, or you know, sea bear, sea slug, sea something. And Tartar in his base form has no limbs. How are they supposed to, alone, keep watch of what is in the ooze and what isn't? And where is all that ooze being stored? Maybe it isn't so perfect after all. Ah well, better get back to preparing a Blast Inkopolis with dangerous world-ending genetic material, right Tartar? You know that little special blowy uppy pack that forces you to ink explode and respawn in the Octave Expansion when you fail a test? Well, it was actually created by an ancestor of Sheldon's. No, no, not a Mosis, but Whoopilium. Instead of being a great inventor of weapons, he was better at making, well, fun stuff. Like cushions. And they were well loved. Especially when he rediscovered the patent created by humans for what was at one time known as the Whoopi Cushion, which he quickly chose to rename himself after due to the product's success. Sheldon, for some reason, doesn't like to talk about him, as apparently he was the only member of his family line that was absolutely terrible at making his own products from scratch. Little did he know that his ancestors' blueprints were repurposed into the weapon of mass destruction that we've all seen blow up on our backs multiple times in the Octo Expansion. Wild stuff. If there's one thing that's missing from the Octo Expansion DLC, it's Callie and Marie. We know that they were caught up with the events of the regular story mode, but so was Captain Cuttlefish. He had to no longer have been captured by Octavio to be able to come on down to the metro, right? So did Callie and Marie just look the other way when Captain Cuttlefish linked off on another dangerous mission? <laughs> Maybe that's why Captain Cuttlefish is retired in Splatoon 3. Callie and Marie got so tired of him wandering off and almost not coming home. 
I think the real reason why the Squid Sisters weren't involved in the events of Octo Expansion was that they were too busy experimenting with how quickly Marie could open and close that brill of hers. Marie's reflexes are fast, but could they defend against Callie's roller? They just had to find out. Again, and again, and again. They must have been so busy, and probably had Agent 4 involved as well to help train Marie's reflexes, that they just didn't pay attention for the entire time of Octo Expansion. Yup. In the trailer for Splatoon 3, we see a few of the creatures on the train that look like they could fit the vibe of the Deep Sea Metro. Why are members of the Metro heading to the Splatlands? Given the harsher environment, the lack of order, and the massive changes in lifestyle that these Zinklings and Octlings have come to accept in Splatsville, it doesn't seem like a good fit for our once underground dwelling friends. But what if that's the point? Since these folks have been underground for so long, maybe they wanted a massively different place to live. It'd be interesting to see a shopkeeper or two that looks more like one of those multi-headed creatures in the metro instead of a funny, brightly colored jellyfish at the clothing shop for a third time. You ever notice how the train in Octo Expansion doesn't consistently have rails underneath it? You know, almost like the train is flying away to somewhere else. Do you think that means that if Agent 8 walked far enough to the train cabins, which are, of course, locked when we try to walk around in Octo Expansion, please, Seed Cucumber, can you just open the door, you're right in front of it, pss, 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 that maybe we could take control of the train and just go wherever we want? I mean, hey, if the train literally floats, what would stop Agent 8 from just floating the entire train up and out of the metro? <laughs> Maybe instead of using the fangs to get out of there, it could just drive themselves to the promised land. Easy. Hopefully they know how to drive a train. <laughs> Octo Expansion, the mode which was the first paid DLC of Splatoon 2, and admittedly the last, probably will inspire Nintendo to throw on another DLC to Splatoon 3 at some point. Hopefully the original storyline is chock full of fun, useful information that lets us actually world build on top of what we've been given in Splatoon 1 and 2. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe for more future shenanigans and lies. I hope you enjoyed listening to a bunch of information that isn't true, but might make you start thinking of ideas that could be true. That's useful. Probably. <laughs>